Hello YouTube, this video is about this custom built radiator that doesn't do the job. It's just too small. Uh, and I know the fan's in the wrong position and I know you shouldn't have a shroud on the front. Uh, that's all information that I've gotten since the radiator was built. What we need to do is build a bigger core support so we can have a bigger radiator. It's been a long time since I've seen the front of the car back on and it's just set there. And the reason I've done that is to get the distance between the top of the radiator and the hood. And in order to do that, I've pulled the motor out so that I can climb inside. So I'll show you what that looks like. This is what the radiator looks like inside. And the white poster board is what I think I can add to the top. The problem with the current radiator that I have is it's just not big enough to cool the uh, engine. The local radiator shop tells me that a good rule of thumb is, is that the surface area of the radiator has to have the same square inches as the displacement of the motor. Our motor is a 454 and this mock-up has 477.75 uh, square inches and it does fit into the current core support. The next thing we're going to do is put it into the car and see if the hood clears the top of the radiator. So the mock-up looks good inside the hood. This is inside the engine compartment. And everything fits, except that's a little tight in the corners. So we're going to have to take some off there. We're back from the radiator shop. And the pretend cardboard radiator has been turned into a real radiator and the real radiator has some significant upgrades over the old radiator. The new radiator has 67% more core space available to the fan than the old heater core. The two heater cores are made up of a very different material. This is made up of tubes. You can actually look through the tube. And this one is made up of sandwich plates. They have an outer plate and then a thin plate and then an inner plate. And then they sandwich them together. And then in between that, they put a twisted piece of metal. So it's supposed to conduct to heat much better than this heater core. I think the only way we'll know is if we put it in a vehicle. So that's the next step. Well, the new radiator is in. Now we got to figure out the fan and the hoses. This is the upper hose to the old radiator. It went something like that. It's pretty close. I think we can make it work for a trial. Let's see if we can put this thing on. Well, there's a kink right here, but I think for what we're going to do, this will work. This bottom hose is going to take a little bit of change because if we put it on like so, it is way too long when you want to go to the water pump. It's almost like two inches too long. So we're going to have to cut it. So let's go get that done. I said it was two inches uh, too long, so we'll cut off an inch and sneak up on it.
Let's see if that helps. Just a half inch too long. The best way I know of taking a half inch off is to take a piece of half inch tape, run it around the outside of the tube, get a nice straight line, and cut it. Let's try that. Here we go with this fit. Let's see how we did. It should be pretty close. We'll slide this bottom one on all the way first. And we see that we've got the right length. Now we'll rotate it and get it on the water pump. Work it all the way up. And I think that's fine. Let's put some water in here and see if we got any leaks. This is going to take forever to fill. The radiator and the hoses aren't linking. Now is the time to start thinking about our fan. Now in the old version, there was a fan on the front and it was a pusher. A lot of people didn't like that. This is a puller and it's going to mount on the back side of the radiator. But unfortunately I can't mount it in the center of the back side of the radiator because there's no clearance between the motor for the electric water pump and the fan. Next thing we got to do is uh, extend these wires. What we need to do is extend these two wires. These will do. We'll strip out some insulation. This is 14 gauge they're using. This is 12 gauge. The lower the number, the thicker the wire. Just twist them together. And I like to hold the wire when I'm soldering it. I get about a solder that way. So that whole joint is soldered. Take some heat shrink. And slide it over our incisions. And shrink it up. These are the wires that go to the fan from the chassis and we now have a fan that will sit in there or something like that with wires that will go clear over to here. So where should we cut them off? Like right there. These are our accurate measurements as to how long we want our extension wire to be. And we'll just make them the same length. Right there. Cut them. And now we have to put these connectors on the end of these wires. And what I'm going to do is put a female on one side and a male on the other side and that way they can't be mixed up and the fan won't run backwards. And he shrink those. It's time to mount the uh, fan to the radiator with these nylon bolts that they give you. 
I might figure out a better way to do that later on, but for right now I want to know if this radiator is going to keep the engine cool or not. So I'm going to use this as a short term method to hold this fan in place. To give ourselves a little bit of working room here, we'll take this uh, wire hole down out. So we know they have to go that length. That gives us plenty of slack. So we'll cut them off right there. And strip the ends. And here's our Jackson plugs. And the red has a male on it. So on this side, we want the red to have the female end. So black is female. So we need a male on this black. through the heat shrink. And we'll plug negative into negative. We have the new fan connected to the chassis and I will wire tie these two wires together, the water pump and the fan. Um, next thing I'll do is put this uh, wire harness cable clamp on. Let's turn the fan on and see how it works. The only way we're going to know if this fan and radiator setup is better than the last fan and radiator setup is to put it through the same test that I put that setup through. And what I did with that setup is, is I had it sitting here idling at about a thousand RPMs and I ran it for 20 minutes and the temperature gauge was still creeping up at 195. So if I get anything better than 185 solid, I'll be really happy. And one of the reasons I say that is, is because we don't have a shroud on the backside of the radiator and you really should. And I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do that. I may end up getting two nine inch fans and staggering them to see if that works better. Let's find out if this radiator is any better than the last radiator, even though it doesn't have a shroud on the back. We'll turn the ignition on, fan, water, fuel, give it a pump of gas. The idle came up to 1500 while we ran that test. That test ran for uh, 25 minutes and the temperature is just under 180. I'm very happy with that. I think uh, if we put a shroud around that fan somehow or maybe split those fans into two we'll really have solved the problem. Well that was quite a tour through uh, the coolant lanes. I think uh, we have a 85% uh, success. 
I think what I need to do is investigate if I can get uh, two nine inch two nine inch fans to go on the inside that'll split the difference of the uh, water pump and then maybe I can put a shroud around it then uh, and I think then I'll be very happy with it but for now I think it'll do we accomplished what we set out to do if you enjoyed this video there'll be more